According to Richard Avedon, there is an element of himself in every photograph he has ever taken, of either the famous or the obscure. For the first time in Avedon's 50-year career as a celebrated fashion photographer, cum controversial portrait artist, he has given exclusive and intimate access to his life and to his work. Richard Avedon, Darkness and Light, is the new documentary film by the Emmy and Academy Award-nominated filmmaker Helen Whitney. I am pleased to have subject and artist together here on this program. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Tell me about this process. This is going to be on American Masters on public television, January 24th, 9 p.m., a 90-minute profile of one of our visual artists that we want to salute. Tell me how you got him to do it. Tell me what go, went into this <laughs> magnus opus. Well, first of all, it was Susan Lacey's idea right. from, from American Masters. The executive producer the executive of American producer. Masters. Right. But uh, it, it wasn't easy. I mean, this is a man uh, and an artist who has a you know, serious sense of himself and of control yeah. and is used to organizing the th his own theater. Yeah. And uh, to persuade him, it took time. We had, wouldn't you say, some moments of difficulty? You were very persuasive. <laughs> you know perfectly well. No. no. So many minutes left. Oh, so, there was. So ahead. what do you want those viewers on public television to come away with at the end of your how many hours of film did you have? About 100 odd hours of film. So 100 hours of film. reduced down, edited down to 90 minutes or 80, whatever. Let me just say that that is not me on the screen, Charlie. That is <laughs> Helen Whitney. With 100 hours, you could turn me into an egomaniac, into a shy, quivering mass of insecurity. So what do we have, an she, egomaniac yeah, or a shy, her, quivering what? You're going to have her interpretation of me, this, this strange exchange. Did happens. you learn anything? by being the subject rather than the, it's the first maker? Time I, ever, I ever gave myself over completely. So a year later, I forgot anything that happened. And but through the editing, she's made up this person. So it's another person. <laughs> this person bears a great deal of relationship to the reality of Duke, yeah. though. I mean, this, I think if you came away from this, you would see an immensely complicated person filled with hubris and humility, filled with melancholy and sunniness, filled with generosity and compassion and self-absorption. Yeah. Um, I mean, a whole range of contradictions, which is Dick's favorite word, which is the which operative... One, a range contra contradiction. contradictions. which is the operative word, yeah. really, in looking at these portraits. Uh, because it's white and black, it's what and what? It's white and black. It's also, you know, Dick is so often, I feel, sort of taking pictures of interior weathers uh, and temperaments and emotional climates in people and I think so brilliant at passageways from feelings that begin in one way and are contradicted and end in another all within one face Tell and me yeah. one thing you and I've talked for hours on this program we did an hour profile and still there's more to know where comes this obsession that this film gets into with face with it's been my entire life. I, uh, I don't know how to answer it. I mean, I'm, uh, for instance, I don't like being with... I love this. I love being with you because this is like dinner in my house. We talk. You come over. One on one. Sometimes two and one. Uh, sometimes <laughs> four. It's a disaster. So it's, I think I'm, I am this person who wants to look into someone's eyes, yeah. talk to them, know about them, and the things I see and put them... And what do you look for? The truth. Oh, 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 the, the truth. No, the truth. No, Helen had it better. It's, I look for something complicated, something contradictory, yeah. something that uh, very often similarities in very strange places. I mean, I, I, as I talk, I'm evoking an expression on your face. We've talked about this. Right. And that's what interests me when I yeah. do something and see what I can bring. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to bring both of them because I want to. Yeah. Uh, when you. Go ahead. You want to say something? I just wanted to say, I think the most. For me, the portrait that best is the best example of that is the Denison portrait, because I think her face, to me, is filled in and of itself with such contradiction. I mean, a woman who's gaunt and greedy, so mm -hmm. self-absorbed, blind, and a visionary. I mean, I, I, I mean mm -hmm. that is true. That, that's the kind of face you are drawn to, and I think it's within these those two stunning, disturbing I've never pictures. asked you this, but if you had to select one photograph and say... This represents who I am, what I am, what my work is, what my... Charlie, that's like saying, All right. what night did you make love the best? <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to answer. I mean, I don't know about you. <laughs> uh, you hope to come away with a sense of the contradictions. In the, what, is, what is best about him as an artist? 
A variety of things. One is he will work 23 and a half hours in a given day to get it right. I mean, I, I, as the collaborator on it, I mean, I was absolutely staggered by that. I really was. And we would film, we would, we would film, we would be exhausted. Worked that way. I worked that way as well. But we would end an 18 hour day and I would be getting a phone call at dawn saying, you know what? Yeah. I could do it better. And you, it's not a phone call I wanted, actually, at that moment. I thought we'd got it pretty well. <laughs> and, uh, Obsession with perfection? Absolutely. Yeah. Getting, getting About work. Yeah. About life? Not so good. <laughs> I don't get that right, but work I can get right. I can you don't think you've it. gotten life right? No. That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to see a very moving thing now. Tell me about your father that's in this film. There was a, 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 a great distance between us because he had grown up in, in a, often in the Lower East Side, having come as an infant from Russia with his mother, deserted by the father, terrible childhood, and he couldn't understand the kind of son I was. And toward the end of his life, I mean, not last decade, as my son was growing up, I wanted to connect to him really, not on just his terms, but I wanted him to know me. And I began the series of photographing him. It had nothing to do with his dying, nothing to do with his being sick, but a way of, of his getting to know what I did. And little by little, this evolved until he came to depend on these photographic settings. And he actually stayed alive until I came back from Europe to pose for the last pictures one week before he died. I'm sorry, I haven't answered your question. No, but that's that, a pretty it good could be. Uh, roll tape. Here it is. For Avedon, remembering his father is complicated. There was little that drew the young Richard to the embittered, remote head of the family. His emotional connection was to his vivid, theatrical mother. There are no childhood photographs of Avedon with his father. His pictures of fathers with children are filled with longing. Fantasies of moments that never happened. The photographs of my father, the making of those photographs, had nothing to do with the art of photography. It had to do with my way of trying to reach him, trying to let him know who I was. Because everything about the two of us was on his terms. I went into business with him. I listened to I knew him very well. I knew what he'd suffered as a child in an orphan asylum in the Lower East Side taken away from his mother, the father who deserted him. Uh, I loved him, but we never spoke the same language. Good for you, uh, for you in capturing this, because it has always been my sense that people somehow need uh, someone that can bring out and capture and touch what it is that defines them in their relationship, especially father and son, mother and daughter, daughter and father, all those pivotal relationships in our life. And to have someone come and get you to talk as honestly makes a difference. Well, she never stopped over and over and over until you forget the camera, you forget she's doing it, and you really begin yeah. to feel something. There is also here, you use other people to talk about him. Mike yes. Nichols, who else, who else? Francine Gray, John Lahr, Andrew Malkovici, uh, just... And do they present, like the proverbial elephant, different perspectives yes. on him, or do you come away with some consensus view of an artist? Well, you, you certainly come away with a sense of complexity. And I think the, Mike Nichols put it very well, and it seemed to sum up what a lot of people were, were trying to say, that he's inside and outside at the same time. You know, you say, use the Duchess of Windsor as a really good example, that this picture on one level could see, be seen as a critique of the thinness of their lives, and yet what, it, what he was able to do and what happens in that picture is you go inside them as well and say, not so easy still to, be, to have a life. Just one last question about movement. What is it about you and movement? It was about me and movement when I really moved. Yeah. I wanted to grow up and be Fred Astaire. And when that burst of energy when you're 21, 22, I mean, I couldn't sit and do studio portraits. And everything, I love to dance, I love to move, I love the girls that I dated when I was a kid with dancers. And I think that that thrust of energy that comes when you're in your 20s, when I began as a fashion photography, 
I went against all the sort of static, what was called fashion photography in those days. I just like moving. <laughs> How do you define yourself as a photographer? I mean, you've had different stages, portrait photographer, portraiture, fashion mm -hmm. photography, uh, social, whatever. I, I'm just a born photographer. I, I get bored. And when I get bored, I move to the next place. And the wonderful thing about the life that's fallen on me is that I can, when I've done too much fashion, stop. When, I, when I've done too much of the deeper, more intense and painful part of myself, I can go back to, to another place. It's like being a writer who writes on many subjects. All of what you do. Congratulations, Helen. We'll be right back.